away it goes. All right. Oh, hold on. Sorry, my cats are hissing. They're they're what? They're hissing at each other. <laughs> oh, hissing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I want to make sure I heard that right. All right. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. We can have hissing in the background. I don't mind. Yeah, sorry. Banana and Reese don't like each other a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, at least it's not like audio hissing. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not that. At least they're not getting into a hissing contest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey. Hey. How was everybody's uh, National Pizza Day? It was good. I had pizza for dinner with my cat pizza. <laughs> was National Pizza Day today? Yesterday. Yesterday. I did not have oh. pizza, and I if I would have known, I would have maybe had pizza. I had a salad. Pizza in Japan is expensive. And it has mayonnaise. And it's weird. <laughs> there was when I more... took a... mm-hmm. I took Japanese class one when when I was taking Japanese class once they like passed around a pizza menu from like a pizza hut just to be like look at all these pizzas and then if they cost so much. That sounds not not great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I got a pie for like twelve bucks. So that was good. <laughs> yeah. That sounds awesome. Cause like Brooklyn pizzas or New York pizzas are supposed to be like the best, right? Well, I mean, I'm a little bit biased, but I think it's the best. <laughs> One of my, oh my friends God. lives in New York and wrote an article for some food blog, like <laughs> literally today, saying that the Bronx has the best pizza in New York. <laughs> oh my God! Sorry. So I um, <laughs> I'm I'm posting this uh, live stream as I do, and there's about. 10 spam comments in the comments already because I mentioned 50 shades freed in the description. <laughs> Watch or download Why free. Does that make me happy. <laughs> Is the subtitle for today's episode 50 games freed? No. It's pretty good, but I said we'll definitely talk we will definitely not talk about the film 50 shades freed. Uh-oh. Did my audio cut out? One second. One second. Okay. Hello? Hello. 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 Okay, good. Sorry, the audio occasionally likes to just stop. Mm. <laughs> okay, but I think we are good. Okay. So you can <clears throat> see Gus hanging out on the sink. But well, you let your cats on your kitchen counter. It's crazy. We can't, can't stop, stop them. them. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Yeah. You can't stop them. <laughs> Okay, stop. Stop. Like my okay, oh, there's another cat in <laughs> All right, we ready to start? how many, I don't know. Whenever we're ready. <laughs> I'm Gucci. I'm ready. Oh my god. Do we have a robot oh. now? Oh. Yeah, Barry tries to open the cupboards to get snacks out because he can open cupboard doors. <laughs> My man. Oh, he's, he's there somewhere. I don't know which way I have to turn the camera. Oh, there we go. Oh, yep, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he's just hanging out. He likes sitting on the edge of the counter because that's where he gets the most attention. Because <laughs> he's edgy? Yeah, he is very edgy. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like being fits up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, Barry? Oh, no. I hope that showed up in the stream because that was a really good Fiona yep. moment. 
<laughs> yep, it was. It, it was definitely in the stream, don't worry. Good boy. <laughs> Both he and Gus will jump out of your arms no matter how high up you are, no matter how far up the stairs you're walking. They have no sense of self-preservation, really. They have zero sense of self-preservation. Although, Gus is now, like... Uh, there's loads of places in the house that Barry needs, like, three platforms to jump up to, and Gus will just jump straight up. Like, Barry needs to climb on the door in our utility room to get onto the counter, whereas Gus is just like, whoop. <laughs> but we should probably stop talking about cats and start doing a video games podcast. Sounds yeah. good to me. We can totally switch our subject forever if you want. Yeah, I mean, we're, I'm sure Andre would love that. Yeah, I was going to say Andre would die. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to episode one of Cat Fix. Uh, <laughs> a chew. Oh, I'm, I'm allergic to cat podcasts. <laughs> I'm trying to grab one, uh, but my none friend, of them are walking by me. <laughs> my friend George has also named his cat Cat Carot in uh, uh, in Monsanto, but he spelt it C A T. No, oh, well, then he's not a real fan. No, exactly. <laughs> not a real no girl. <laughs> Fake Dragon Ball girls. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think we're now ready to start. I think that the, the I think that Fiona's jobs in our kitchen are now done. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sweet dab, Alex. Dab, Alex. Don't think we missed that. <laughs> um. I've been rewatching. This is less less podcast, more just like life conversation chat. I've been rewatching the My Brother, My Brother and Me TV show for like the ninth time, and uh, there's an amazing scene where they're trying to do water bottle flipping. But you know how obviously all water bottle flip videos are like the one attempt out of a thousand that work. They show you like a, all a hundred attempts in a row. <laughs> Oh, man. And uh, when Griffin finally does it, he does this dab and then starts spinning around. It's extremely funny. Yeah. My favorite is when I go to the school and they like throw water bottles into the classroom. <laughs> 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 They're just like. <laughs> I need to get into this thing. Do you know Griffin McElroy oh. invented dabbing? Uh, yeah, I'm sure oh. he did. <laughs> there are people who honestly um, believe that. <laughs> Alex, I can send you some very good links and keep you very entertained. About dabbing? Or about Griffin uh, McElroy? Uh, both. both. Okay, so Have you I seen mean... Griffin McElroy crunch a banana? Oh, the crunch! <laughs> <laughs> I cannot say I have. I'm sending it to you right now and I'm on a live reaction before yeah. we start doing this live podcast. Gaming live reacts. Oh my god. I don't follow the McElroys, but I am very familiar with that video. I probably watched it like 50 times. <laughs> the best thing I've ever right. seen. It's coming across. It's coming across. It's also the worst thing I've ever seen. I mean, yeah. <laughs> You're not wrong. So, real quick, the origin of this joke is that in the Sea of Thieves video... But you don't even uh, need... Don't give, don't give it context. Oh, okay. No context. I, it's just <laughs> better with context? I don't know. It's after the Sea of Three, Sea of Thieves U two or not U two E three like reveal or trailer last year, trailer. And to heal yourself, you eat fruit, and they just eat a banana like straight whole. And Griffin's like, "Let's do this." Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna watch this, but I'm gonna watch it from our spectator on the stream so that the stream can actually see it. No, <laughs> that sounds like a great idea. From us for the Xbox E3 the, the video that I've said has got a very good uh, zoom in on Griffin during the crunch as well. I feel like the original is extremely funny because it's just happening in the background, but the zoom in and the sound they increased the sound a little bit. Coming all sorts of gameplay stuff, just really run of the mill traditional hands on video game E3 coverage for you to enjoy. So stay tuned and remember to subscribe. And you can tune he in. Back for just goes second. to town. He goes back for another bite. He does. <laughs> I, I've said multiple times that that's the bravest thing I've seen on video. Just go back for that. Facebook page you can check out there. We're doing very good daily on there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs>
okay. It's so bad. I, that was beautiful. Thank you for that. I saw that completely devoid of context, like on Twitter. And I was like, w why? Uh, so, <laughs> Later. I, I watched that literally 10 seconds, I think, after the video got put up, because I was literally on YouTube as they were doing it. The best thing about my time zone is that I'm getting up in the morning when the giant bomb nightly shows are finishing. Mm -hmm. And like when the Polygon content was uploading and it came online, I was like, oh, I'll watch this. And I was cr like crying with laughter. Like, I need to get in the shower and go to work. What's happening? That's spectacular. But, okay, let's get our podcast yeah. started. Yeah, oh, we yeah. should record a podcast. Now he's a robot. Yeah, we didn't get like any of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was so good. It was really well done. I'm going to turn Steve off in case that's destroying my internet connection. It's about the intros you don't play. Yeah. It's about the intros you make along the way. Yeah. Um, I also think that, like, I have this weird feeling that my Wi-Fi card is in the front left armrest on my laptop because sometimes when I put my hand on it, the Wi-Fi gets inexplicably bad. So I've now moved the laptop very slightly to the right, left even. Mm. Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode six of Gaming Fix, the only podcast recorded by uh, six friends uh, who know each other from the internet uh, about video games that I can be bothered to listen to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it goes again. Oh, no. We're back. Mr. Roboto has returned. Did I cut out again? Yeah. Right. Yes. It might be okay. that you, you really didn't. Bluetooth or no, because everything went bad, so never mind. I don't know. Um, I'm just going to move to a wired connection. It'll only take me two seconds. Hey guys, <laughs> Hi. welcome to episode one of the Cat <laughs> Fix podcast, where we talk about fixing cats. <laughs> yeah, let's let's fix those cats so that don't, they don't reproduce, there aren't any more. <laughs> wow, Andre. Wow. Genocide. That's, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, no. <laughs> we can't start the podcast talking about genocide. We have to wait until we talk about God of War 4 first. I mean, hey, we've been playing Monster Hunter. We've been talking about it for like two, three weeks. <laughs> I think it's time we get to the the meat of the matter. Have you gotten to chapter four? Is what we're saying. Have you gotten to chapter four in Danganronpa V3? I have not. <laughs> I have not gotten to chapter <laughs> got two to in Danganronpa Two. <laughs> every week, every week it gets a mention. <laughs> yeah, that is. But we haven't started the episode yet. So technically... Oh no, it's, really this is still it. part of the intro, don't you worry. <laughs> the full botched intros. Oh yeah. yeah. Hashtag content. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta pad it we out. We're gonna have another, another week of relaxed on the sofa. We started 25 minutes late. Yeah. <laughs> One person oh, down. Oh, I'm just gonna grab my... Sp speaking of, rest in peace, Pat. Rip God, in peace. Not forgotten. Uh, Rip in peace. When he's literally going out to dinner, but you know. <laughs> to, us, <laughs> to us, to us, he's currently dead. dead. Oh, no. <laughs> he's ripping his back clouds in peace. He's dead to <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah, he's dead to us now. Sorry, Pap. Yeah. <laughs> he's saying not invited for next week. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. And away we go. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 6 of Gaming Fix, the only video games podcast recorded by six friends on the internet who don't live anywhere near each other. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about video games news, uh, we're going to maybe have some review style content, and we're going to talk about what we've been playing. Uh, and I think we've also got a special feature, a 500 word uh, review of Fifty Shades Freed prepared by Alex uh, earlier in the day. Um, so that's, I think that's where we're going to end up. Uh, but uh, on today's episode, we are missing a member, a uh, rip in peace, Pat J. Carter, as we've uh, previously mentioned in the eight botched intros that we've done because my internet connection was bad. And uh, I am your um, German... You didn't actually die, we should say, for the stream. Yeah. He, did, he didn't <laughs> die. He just dead to us, as we've said many times. <laughs> 
Uh, so yeah, I'm your chairman, moderator, um, guy who doesn't push the podcast on quickly enough, and uh, all those things. Uh, Sam Harrison. Uh, with me today, we've got Alex. Hey, I hung out with no fewer than fifteen dogs today. Ooh, Ooh. that's the podcast I'd listen to. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> it's a lot of barking. So, so much barking. Uh, they were so point. loud. <laughs> Allison. I was trying to think of something funny to say, but I couldn't. So, he- hello. Hey, what about that? Uh, what about that? Um, that link. Was it you that sent the link about the the shape of water uh, thing? No, that was me. Nope, that okay. was Sam. <laughs> I'll take what? I, I need to go find that though because I love that movie. Ingrid oh, uh, <laughs> it's it's not very surprising. Oh wait, 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 wait! wait, wait never mind. Like, I, saw, yeah, I, I remember it. what that was. I looked at it. <laughs> oh boy! And I'm there. I'm yes. a real Dragon Ball girl. Yep. <laughs> And Erica? Hey, my hand's healing. Yay! Yay! Awesome. Yay. So, I figure, as we always do, let's start off with a bit of what everyone's been playing. So, um, Erica, why don't you go first? Okay, so, I've been playing a hot 2018 release. And by 2018 release, I mean 1997 release. Riven, the sequel to Mist. <laughs> what? <laughs> sick <laughs> yeah so um that is my number one favorite game ever um <laughs> and i probably play it like once or twice a year i would say and it's you know the controls are such that i can play it with only one hand so <laughs> it's been working out well for my bad hand that game is still great it's still my favorite game there's a lot of really good things in there like um, specifically, one of my favorite puzzle things is, uh, there's like, um, like a, a set of numbers that are, you have to deduce yourself through whatever symbols they give you, and, um, they have a classroom, and in the classroom they have a tool that teaches you how to, uh, you know, well, spoilers for a 10 year old game. <laughs> we, uh, like, if you, if you go in this classroom, there's like a toy where you like hit a button on it and it rolls through the symbols that mean the different numbers. And then on it, like a thing drops down for like however many numbers it is and it teaches it to you that way. And I thought that was kind of like, how you would maybe teach numbers to a child in, you know, real life or something like that. And it's just a fun game. There's a lot of really good, very hard puzzles in it. And hey. it super holds up. It's like still one of the most beautiful games I've ever played, despite it coming out over 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have really bad news for you, Erica. Over 10? Mm-hmm. 90, 1997 was over oh, 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you you're old. I'm so old. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I was born in 91. I should be able to handle this math. <laughs> Guys, I used to be a math major too in college. <laughs> I'll blame it on the painkillers again this week. <laughs> I think that's fair. Great idea. But yeah, um, yeah. So that game is over twenty years old, not over ten. I mean, well, it is still over ten as well. But <laughs> um, yep. Yes, Checks out. I highly recommend that game. I think it's on iPads now too, and Android devices and whatnot. And I, That's it's cool. probably not. I mean, I like to see like the big scenery things. That, you know, the the strong point of that game is definitely its looks and whatnot. So I'd rather play it on a big screen, but. You know, I would. I think it would hold up just fine on an iPad if you wanted to play it that way. Do you think it's one of those games? I never played it. I played Mist, but I never played Riven. Is it one of those games that you can jump into these days without a guide and figure your way through it, or is it kind of like the old Monkey Island games where some parts are just so arbitrary you have no idea what to do? It's definitely not. It's not you know a rubber chicken and a pulley type thing. Like it's not okay. that bad. It's more like. I'm sorry if you can hear the dog barking upstairs. Um, no, it's fine. <laughs> okay. The, uh, the the puzzles are more uh, 
like once you figure out what's going on a lot of the puzzles are very similar like there are numbers that usually correlate with like an animal which you know which correlates with the sound and stuff like that and so you kind of start figuring it out that way because mm -hmm. you know it's kind of just i don't want to say it's one big puzzle because it's actually a lot of small puzzles but they all relate very well so it's not it's much less of a monkey island and much more of like i don't want to say the witness but maybe the witness yeah. a little bit like sure. maybe a little more arbitrary than the witnesses but... or like kind of like the latter parts of fez or something yeah yeah definitely yeah i would say okay. closer to that um cool yeah i don't know it's still my favorite game. I'm kind of obsessed with that universe. I own all the books. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's just, you know, it's a world that I want to spend as much time as possible in, which is why I keep replaying this game. <laughs> That's awesome. I highly recommend it. If you haven't played it, it still super holds up. Awesome. Good to hear. Uh, and Andre, what have you been up to this week? Uh, stop me if you've heard this before. I've been playing Dragon Ball Fighters and Monster Hunter World. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, still going strong on those. Uh, it's really great to have two games come out early in the air that have just like sucked me in like that. Uh, and I feel like I'm getting better at both of them. Uh, Dragon Ball, I learned how to chain level one supers into level three supers. Uh, cause like part of the normal tag system is you can do like a level one super. And then you can tag in your partner, and then they'll do their level one super. And then you can tag in your other partner, and they'll do their level one super. <laughs> but another thing you can do is if you do like down back, and then the tag button while you're doing your level one, then your partner will come in and do their level three. So you get even more damage off that. And so that's really fucking cool when you do it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I've just been working on that a little bit. Uh, I played so much one night that I got a blister on my thumb. Uh, using a game pad instead of a fight stick. <clears throat> so uh, that had me looking at fight sticks for a hot minute, but I don't think I'm going to get one because I think getting a whole new controller for one game is kind of not my style. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yesterday I played like six to eight hours of Monster Hunter Worlds like in a row. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. I did a lot of high rank stuff. I was playing with someone who's like Hunter rank 70 something, 79, which is real high. Uh, I finished the story at like 50, Hunter rank 15, I think. And so uh, they have just been doing like all the post game stuff for a while, I guess. I don't know. Uh, and like other people. So I was running with a four, four man squad. <clears throat> And that game is, like, totally different and a lot more fun with a four-man squad because you can, like, do a whole bunch of different stuff. Someone was using a bow gun or a bow and a bow gun, maybe. And so they were putting, like, sleep on, like, the monsters and paralyzing them and then we're setting up bombs on the monsters. So then when they wake up, there's just a massive explosion around them. And so we're dealing, like, 2,000 damage at once, which feels really fucking good. Cool. And... Uh, it opens up like a lot of uh, strategic things. Like you can hit people with like the great hammer and then they'll go flying into the air and then they can like attack out of that and like try and mount, which is pretty funny. Or like they can just like hit you and screw up your combo. And so you go flying like in the completely wrong direction. I started uh, messing with the long sword. Uh, I had been using the charge blade up until yesterday and I started using the long sword. I got one fully upgraded and it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's pretty anime with like one of your moves you end up jumping like 20 feet in the air and then coming down and slashing them and it does a bunch of damage and yeah like the monsters are pretty tough in the post games thing like the tempered like basil goose is so ridiculous like one of its little scale exploding scales can like almost 100 to zero me even with like really good late game armor that's very upsetting yeah, and so once you get to, like, level 29 is when you start unlocking, like, the further late game stuff. And that quest has you take on two tempered basil geese, and it's no good. Uh, so, yeah, that game is a lot of fun with, like, a group of people. And I would recommend it uh, if you have the opportunity to play Monster Hunter World with other people. That is the way to play it. It's a lot more fun, and you can 
do a lot of silly stuff, but this is the first time I felt like the empathy that other people have talked about. Like Erica, you mentioned like you wouldn't don't want to play it because like you'd feel too bad for the monsters. Yeah. And uh, there is this blue little ver- velociraptor called like a Tsitsi Yu. Oh, I don't Tsitsi. remember. Yeah, Tsitsi Yaku. Uh, so my my buddy needed some parts from that guy, <clears throat> and he just wasn't getting them from when we did the quest. Like, so we had to do it like six times. But with four people, it's not a problem. But the beatdown we laid on this monster was just so savage. Like, as soon as we started attacking it, it couldn't move. We could, like, kill it without it, like, leaving its spot as, like, from the first moment we hit it. And it was just, oh, I felt so bad. But also, yeah. it, was, it was hilarious because, like, it's not something you normally see in those games. Like, and then, and like the last time we did it, someone set up a bomb in the middle of like all of us hitting him. So then one of us hit the oh. bomb and it blew up and knocked us all away. A bomb. Yeah. <laughs> you thought I, I thought about you set up a bong in the middle of all of it. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, yeah, set up a bomb. <laughs> and uh, like the, the bomb was bigger than like bigger than the monster. And so we hit the bomb and then all of us get flown backward or flown backwards. And then the monster uses that as its moment to like run away. So then we all start chasing it. And then, yeah, it like it was hilarious. But also I was like, oh man, this I feel bad for this monster. Because it just can't do uh, anything. I've started to get a little bit of feel bad for monsters. Uh, I've switched to using the bow and you don't have to sharpen. So no. if I'm facing anything that I'm not, that I'm like absolutely destroying, like they don't get away because when they start to run, I just run after them and like keep shooting them. Uh, so that's it's pretty good for like consistent damage. Yeah, um, and I'm really enjoying the bow actually. I, I I think the bow is my weapon now. I think that's the one that I found. Yeah, uh, I saw someone take down a Diablos in two minutes with the bow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's there's um it's strong. Uh, it's the the wall run attack with the bow. That I haven't actually figured out how to do yet, but I, I will eventually. Yeah, so those games yeah. still very good. Um, so two things I realized this week. I think it's two. Maybe maybe it's only one. Uh, G rank stuff, which has been kind of like the thing in like monster hunter 4 ultimate and like the ultimate editions that usually come out in the west after like i think monster hunter 4 was out in japan then they put ultimate out <clears throat> which has like more end game stuff so they'll probably end up doing that with worlds but i don't think they might do like kind of like the street fighter street fighter arcade edition stuff where you can either buy like the arcade edition or you can just upgrade to it mm. So that'll probably be what they do with this game, which will probably put more monsters and weapons in. Uh, but I don't know. They might do that next year, maybe, or late this year. I don't know. That would be my thought as well. I would assume that they would go the DLC route rather than the new game route. Yeah, especially since this game came out in both Japan and like internationally at the same time. So they don't have to like localize and like, oh, well, since we're putting it out, we'll put in extra stuff. I think they'll go the Destiny route and put out a forty dollar expansion. Forty uh, might be in a winter. Bit much. Forty depends yeah. on what they put in it, I guess. But yeah, like because I was looking and Monster Hunter Four Ultimate had ninety eight monsters or something like that. That is nowhere like Monster Hunter World is nowhere close to that. Yeah. So that would, yeah. That's been a little disappointing. Like, oh man, there were like way more variety in the monsters in Monster Hunter, like uh, Four Ultimate, and like more weapons and stuff like that. It seemed like so. I look forward to whatever expansion they do. Yeah, I mean, my personal like, I I would assume that they'd do a Destiny style expansion where they had a load of new story stuff and a load of new uh, higher level stuff and maybe a couple of new monsters and weapons Except and this... get themselves in the game of the year conversation. Maybe doing it at Christmas time. the story is like so much worse than <laughs> Destiny story. But so I feel like there's no I don't see a point in adding to that, but maybe. I think they would add to it just so that they could say they've got story content to justify the price. Maybe. I I don't think they'll do forty, but they might. I don't know. 
anyway, yeah, that's what I've been playing. Have you still been watching the the show for Dragon Ball? Yes, I've I've slowed down because I've been so consumed by uh, uh, the other stuff. Um, and I'm I'm I think I'm thirty episodes away from being caught up. I'll probably watch some more this weekend. Uh, you know, the show's ending soon. I think its final episode is going to be in March. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to get caught up and I, I at least want to finish it before like DLC characters start coming out for mm-hmm. Dragon Ball Fighters because some of them will be from the show and most of them will be from the like final part of the show, it seems like. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm still watching Kai, but I don't want to get too far ahead now of all systems Goku. Uh, because I'm enjoying that podcast so much. Uh, one episode. Like, yeah, but that first episode was so funny. Yeah. That's good. Um, so yeah, I want to I want to hold off on Kai a little bit so I don't get so far ahead that I'm not familiar with what they're talking about anymore. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Speaking of making sense, Alison, what have you been playing? Um. I wanted to actually finish this before the podcast, but I didn't get there. Um, didn't have a ton of time to play games this week. Um, but I'm still on Celeste right now. Um, almost done with the story, question mark. Um, I'm in the middle, like right about halfway through chapter seven. Yeah. Um, and I know that there's more to be played, but I'm trying to at least get through the story of it. And I am kind of obsessed with this game. I... Uh, which I had more time to get, uh, give it um, because it's it's just one of those games where it, I feel like it um, matches the story with the gameplay so well. And especially, this is the one game where I feel like um, difficulty is uh, genuinely a big part of the story. So I'm willing to push through <laughs> even, um, mm-hmm. to make sure that I can uh, keep playing this game. For what it's worth, uh, sorry, that last chapter that you're on, chapter seven, yeah, it's a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, it kind of is. I'm about halfway through. Uh, I, I'm assuming, considering the, um, uh, I don't want to get too spoilery in case you guys are playing it because it's it's kind of a fun, a neat game to discover. But uh, it's a, it's it's a lot of like, see what you've learned so far, um, culminating in the last chapter. So I feel like that's where I'm at, but it's, it's been a lot of fun to play through. Um, last night I stayed up way too late playing through the end of, uh, chapter six because I got so emotionally attached to it. And I was just like, I need to do this right now. Um, so I played it, I was playing it at like three in the morning. Uh, some of it got me really emotional too, because the, um, story is, and characters are really great. Uh, I've definitely found myself, um, uh, relating to the main character Madeline a lot, so it's kind of like almost kind of hard to get through because it's like so it's so emotional for me. Um, but I feel like it's this perfect marriage of really fun platforming with with the story in a way that I don't know how many games can get that kind of platforming plus story. Um, and like I said, the the difficulty does feel totally earned. Although I'm I'm glad that they have the Definite uh, different accessibility options too, because I, I this is a game I want more people to experience, even if they might not necessarily have the either the skill level or they I, they need some sort of accessibility. So I, th- I think it's great if this is um I, this is almost certainly going to be showing up on my game of the year stuff net at the end of the year. So look out for that. But it's I, I'm really loving this game. Is Celeste better than Brothers? Uh. I yeah. would, those are very different games. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I'd say yes. But let me let me rephrase the question: Are you think there will not be ten games better than Celeste this year? Um. Well, I. There yeah, are I, I, I'd more say, than say ten months yes. left. I would say yes. Um. I. This is getting me in a way that um, is similar to my love of something like Shovel Knight, which I definitely rank up there as like one of my favorite games ever. Um, so I would say, I would say, yeah, that this is totally, it might just be me 
go ahead, meet me at the end going, guys, what about Celeste? But I feel like the <laughs> um, emotional, um, it, it's simultaneously some of the greatest gameplay I've been, I've had recently. Um, it's a beautiful game. It's, it's really gorgeous and almost some of the visuals are kind of surprising too. Um, like it's not just that kind of retro style. It, it sometimes um, breaks from that in interesting ways. Yeah. And uh yeah, and just the it, it explores uh, subjects like uh like depression and uh personal struggles in a way that I don't know how many other games have really done as well. So it's it's just I feel like it's hitting all these buttons and I, I feel like I mean, I honestly think it could be my I don't want to say number one, but it's it's definitely <laughs> gonna be pretty high up there because i'm i love this game uh i think it's a shoe in for some of the best moments of the year <laughs> yes like i would say like this is no spoilers but if i were to pick two moments from that game it would be the feather mm -hmm. which was amazing and yes. you know the point where it zooms in on you and it says level up mm, yes 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 that's probably the other one <laughs> that's a good one but let me talk to you about the first time you hit something with a hammer in Monster Hunter and it falls over. <laughs> it's emotional. <laughs> very emotional. <laughs> the hammer is a very good weapon. Uh, speaking of great weapons, Alex, what have you been playing? Oh god, that, that transition can work in some real bad ways. Um, I've been playing a bunch of random crap. Um... I'll talk about the stuff that isn't as important right now. So I've, I've been playing some fart, uh, Fortnite with uh, Cheska and some of her friends. Uh, the Battle Royale. <laughs> yes, we've been playing Fortnite with Cheska <laughs> and her friends. I thought you were going to say Fart Cry. Yeah, Fart Cry. Five. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and uh, Battle Royale mode. It's cool. I don't know. I don't really have that much to say about it. It's basically PUBG, but arcade, like arcade -y. It's cool, but I can't say I love it yet, but I've only played like 10 rounds overall. So I don't know. Um, finished Celeste, like completely finished, uh, well finished, uh, up until the extra chapter, which has a whole bunch of extra stuff that is going to take me another several hours to get through. And I plan to do it, but not right now. Uh, and to give the short version of Celeste to just piggyback on what Allison was saying is, is it's exceptional. And it's definitely on my top 10 for the year. Like I, I don't see a way that gets knocked off at the moment. Um, but the thing that I started and finished this week was the Shadow of the Colossus remaster, mm. which, um, I never played the original Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, I was always kind of adjacent to it. I'd always been familiar with it. Uh, I had some friends who said it's like life changing for them back when it came out on the PS2. <laughs> and I was like, you guys are exaggerating. That's, it's not that crazy, is it? And it's really good. Like, <laughs> I have a hard time imagining something of that scale coming out on the PS2. Um, mm. I know that it, there were some caveats with it. Like it ran at like 12 frames per second a lot of the time. And like um, after you finish uh, Shadow of the Colossus, you get, you know, I usually get like concept art that you unlock or whatever. Uh, this one will actually show you comparison images between the PS2, direct like same angles mm. and everything uh, between the PS2 and the remake. And I thought it was actually pretty jarring. Like it was way way different than i would have expected and there's uh, a lot more draw distance in that yes new. that and the texture is like the textures yeah. from the ps2 game look like a ps1 game <laughs> mm -hmm. but the ps4 game is like ridiculously beautiful so yeah um so i don't know if there's much to be said about shadow of the colossus as a game um if you haven't played it i would say it's kind of, if you want to draw it to some kind of modern comparison, it's kind of Monster Hunter meets Uncharted meets Zelda. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it. I, I think that's extremely reductive, and I think it's better than all of those in its own ways. Uh, I also really hated playing it, because <laughs> it felt extremely janky. It felt like a PS2 game. And, like, so when I say it's the like... the PS2 game, like, the controls are better now, so imagine what that PS2 yeah. game must have felt like. Yeah, there it, it does have a modern control scheme, uh, which is, according to Cheska, better. Um, but, like, the Uncharted comparison comes from the fact that there's a lot of climbing involved, where you are, you know, scaling up these massive things, and you're holding onto your grip, and you're jumping and going side to side, stuff like that. And 
I didn't even finish The Lost Legacy because I hated the climbing so much, and that was basically automatic. <laughs> you didn't have to manage a grip meter. So mm. you can you can imagine how much I dislike the climbing in, in Shadow of the Colossus. <laughs> and I also really didn't like Breath of the Wild because it was relatively directionless with how large the world is. And the world in Shadow of the Colossus is enormous and relatively directionless other than the, the sword that you're holding in your hand and shining a light. Yeah. Yeah. And, but despite all of that, I ended up really loving it. I think it was exceptional. And if you have played Shadow of the Colossus, according to Cheska, she says it was, it was worth playing through again. And it was a really beautiful okay. remake. And it... sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I, it was just interesting to hear, uh, that some from somebody that just hasn't played it before, because I was wondering how well that would translate to new people who haven't tried the game before. Yeah, ever. yeah, like for yeah. So for me, who has never touched the original, I I thought it was completely worth going through. Like, like I I bring up the fact that I really didn't like Uncharted and Zelda and stuff like that just to drive home the fact that I really liked Shadow of the Colossus quite a bit. So, yeah, that was yeah. a bit about it for my week. I also saw a really terrible movie, but that's not worth talking about. <laughs> Five hundred uh, words on my desk after school. It was just <laughs> who's that movie for? <laughs> I don't know. It, Suburban Housewives. Who? Are, yeah, that's what the book was for because you can read it on the train and nobody knows because you have an e-reader. But like, <laughs> oh, let's not get into, let's not get into this. Start. Yeah. <laughs> did you know that story started as Twilight fan fiction, I, Alex? I did. I heard about that. And it doesn't surprise me. Uh, it's like if um, someone made uh, Buy Immortal into a feature for like a Netflix series. <laughs> no. That's a really wonderful comparison point. Did, did you hear about the new book that came out uh, this year where um, the book was so bad that people were speculating, oh, it's by the author of My Immortal, right? And the author of My Immortal came out and was like, yeah, no, I, I'm not responsible for that. Like, that was, <laughs> that was like the first time it come out in like years and it was like, no, I don't want to, don't, don't blame this on me. <laughs> don't, don't put that on me. I, um, I don't know if the author of My Immortal has ever been actually identified. No, it has, they have been now. As of I, that book that uh, I, I that saw I some, I saw some theorizing that some stuff they were saying didn't quite line up with. My oh yeah, model, but, you know, mm, they had like I don't know. They had like a you know proof. They had like you know old manuscripts, if you can even call them that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't know. from 1995 with the opening line doodled in the cat in the margin. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Christian Grey's character is based on Jacob from Twilight. I just want you all to know. Uh, no, he's based off of Edward. I'm sure somebody told me it was Jacob. That made it even know. funnier for me. So Aww. they're making they're making like Harry Potter, they're like Portkey games or whatever. What if they made a My Immortal game? Oh dear God, <laughs> I'd play it honestly. I, I would too. Like Harry, <laughs> Pot <laughs> Harry Potter open world, like make your own Hogwarts character RPG. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> once, I mean, once they open that, there are going to be all like at least Ebony, the main character from my, my world is going to sh- Dementia Raven way. Yep, snap and loopin. Okay, here's the two sentence review of Fifty Shades. Yes. Well, it's maybe not review. Fifty words each. Yeah. No. Let, <laughs> let's just give it. Free. Let's give it a summary. I want to make sure that everyone knows which film we're talking about. <laughs> Fifty Shades Freed, the 2018 film starring some people that I don't actually know. Um, Johnson and uh, Jamie... Dornan? McNamara? Dornan. Yes, Dornan. 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 So that movie has extremely poorly written characters and story. And so like that's half the movie, right? And the other half of the movie is Bonin. And none of the Bonin was particularly titillating. So I don't see... It, it was missing on all, on all, all chambers there. But like... The way the way it was set up was just so strange because it like it kind of had a through line for its plot, but not really. Where it was just kind of a lot of like short stories tied together with boning in between, <laughs> and then it tried to tie it all together at the end, uh, and then they had a kid. Oh, <laughs> that was a twist wow, I was spoiler. unaware of. Yeah, so spoilers. I just ruined that movie for you. <laughs> So I've never read, I've never read or seen any of the movies, but I heard that apparently 
the uh, first Fifty Shades book is based off of the first fanfic, but the t last two books are based off of the same fanfic. So there's no real, like, there's not enough there for two books, from what I understand. It's, it's, uh, I would, I would probably agree because it's not particularly deep. It's basically a five-year-old's, like, perspective on what a rich person should act like. <laughs> it's like, oh, I want to buy this huge house now. Okay, let's do it. Let's fly on our private jet and go to Paris. Okay. Like, there's there's nothing deep about it. Don't go see that movie. It's terrible. I <laughs> wasn't <laughs> planning on it, but thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, I heard a fantastic story about Fifty Shades today, just to diverge Let's... even further from our topic. No, oh my god. <laughs> Uh, so apparently the first Fifty Shades movie, they got Sam Taylor Johnson, who's a pretty good director, and they had this really good writer in who had, um, written like an erotic thriller movie that was really well received. And like, basically he rewrote the whole script, took out all the garbage from the books and like, like redid the whole thing and then presented it. And like Charlie Hunnam was signed on to be Christian Grey and it was going to be this like really, it was going to be a good movie. And then E.L. James was like, you're not getting the rights to my book unless I can have final script edit. And they were like, mm, okay. And she just put all of her trash back in the book, back in the film. And Charlie Hunnam was like, I'm not doing this movie, it's trash. So they had to get Jamie, H Jamie Dornan to sub in. Yeah, have you seen like the the two of them going around on, a, <laughs> on like the talk show circuit of like... <laughs> No. It's, it's I mean I haven't seen it for this movie, I saw it more for the last movie, but like man, the two of them hate each other. Ugh. <laughs> Jamie Jordan, you could tell they do not want to be in the same room. It is bad and uncomfortable. <laughs> Speaking of bad and uncomfortable. Hey wait, have we all finished talking yeah. about our games other than Sam? <laughs> yeah, good. Cool. Uh uh so no, I, I think that, played... that was Sam's time. Yeah. Oh <laughs> shit. Oh well. Music. Well, you know, I, I played. Uh, I played the Shadow of the Colossus remake um, as well. I'm like two colossi down. That so I did the easy ones. It took me about half an hour, and I have yet to go back to that game because I'm terrible at uh, finishing things and carrying on with things and generally doing more than playing a lot of Monster Hunter. Um, uh, so yeah, I played. Probably about another 15 hours of Monster Hunter in the last week. Um, mostly getting my friend from zero to high rank. So that was basically very fun to play, but did absolutely nothing for me in terms of gear. Because uh, everything I was getting was like not useful at all. Um, I, yeah, I was talking about earlier, I switched to the bow. Bow feels like my weapon. I'm really set on that now. Um, I've got quite a few high level ones. I'm really happy with the way that it works. I do still intend to like actually stream some Monster Hunter and I will get around to it, but uh, I always forget I want to do it until I'm done playing Monster Hunter. Um, but the other game that I, the game that I have brought to talk about this week, not my honorable mentions of Shadow of the Colossus and Monster Hunter, is Dragon Quest Builders for the Nintendo Switch Hot 2018 release. I even had a prop. Those of you listening to the uh, video, listening to the video version, listening to the audio version. Um, so yeah, I've, I've been playing Dragon Quest Builders. It came out yesterday, um, and uh, I ordered it by accident uh, by <laughs> pre-ordering it and then completely forgetting that I'd done it. Um, so that was a nice surprise when I got home Friday evening. Um, and uh, yeah, popped it straight in the switch as soon as I got it, and uh, I think I played about five or six hours now uh yesterday and today just kind of like while stuff is on like fiona and i were watching friends on netflix for a bit and i just pop dragon quest builders on um it's a uh, it's real cool i don't know did any of you guys play it last year when it came out for big boy consoles oh nope. they have i like i watched xavier play it but i didn't really touch it at all myself um d does anyone here like dragon quest and or like building games i liked dragon no. warrior actually i know that's probably weird but 
I intend to try whatever the new Dragon Quest, Dragon Quest what, Eleven, is that the new one? I Eleven, intend yeah. to try that, but that's about it. Uh, so I don't have much Dragon Quest nostalgia. In the the first Dragon Quest I got to was eight, and I played seven on the 3DS. Um, I've got some like nostalgia for things like slimes, uh, and like uh, some of the kind of unique enemy stuff in those games but like um just like it's just like a really cool well done like it reminds me a lot of um things like maybe terraria so like you know you're venturing further and further afield to get rarer and different kinds of materials but um the main hook in this version is that you're building a town and like you're the only person in the world who knows how to build everyone else has like forgotten how to build and create things by adding one thing to another uh and so it's a quite funny central conceit um but what you're trying to do is build this town but also attract other people to the town by making it good so kind of like animal crossing pocket camp i guess (laughs) uh and like you build different types of rooms by putting different furniture in them so like earlier today, I was building. I built a like workroom where you make like just wait. It's got like a smithing table where you make stuff, and then I unlocked the ability to make a forge and put a forge in the corner, and it upgraded the room, and like automatically upgraded it. And you get points for uh, different levels of points and all that sort of thing for having a room or decorating a room, and your town levels up. It's really cool. Um, and I'm I'm definitely going to play a lot of it. I think it's going to be my train game for the next month or so. Although I thought about that about Xenoblade Two, and I think I've only played about twenty hours of that. Uh, but yeah, so I'm hoping it'll be my train game. And uh, yeah, really enjoyable. I would totally recommend it, especially because it's like at least in the UK, it's like half full price, like half price, even on Switch. Um, it's only thirty two pounds on Amazon. Um, whereas normally a Switch game would be forty, like forty five, fifty. So pretty good price to be honest for what you get. And I've not even finished the first area, and I've probably played about five hours. So great value for money, good fun, and it's like background mindless fun as well. So like you can have a podcast on or friends. The yeah, weird, it's all good. The Highly weird thing about sorry, the weird thing about that game is just how blown away everyone is that you can build stuff. Like, it's like you're blowing yeah. their minds. They're just like, "What <laughs> are you doing? You can't do that. <laughs> you can't put two things on top of each other. What the? <laughs> that is almost word for word a line from one of the characters in the game. Like yeah. when you first build something in front of this uh, character, she's like, "What you took." two things and made them into one different thing it's extremely yeah. good and and the narrator I mean, the narrator hates yeah. you yeah the narrator yeah the narrator hates you constantly mocks you it's quite funny <laughs> oh dear that, um, okay that sounds that sounds pretty good if anyone has a switch or, or any console really but like it the demo's free so uh and the demo's like two hours of the main game oh, like it's, yeah it's significant it's really sizable I would even say probably more than two hours because I think I played a couple and was like, I don't want to play anymore, so I'm going to have to replay it when I buy the game. <laughs> um, but yeah, there didn't seem to be any sign of it stopping. Um, yeah. It's a great game. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun, and the demo is 100% free on basically everywhere you can buy it. So I think that's what we've been playing out of the way. Uh, I have a Shadow of the Colossus question. Sure. Ooh. Um, should I play that game? <laughs> like, have you ever I, have I you tr- played it before i tried to um my boss hopefully she's not watching this um <clears throat> made me sit through a movie uh, i want to say it was called rain over me maybe with adam sandler and don Cheadle. um <laughs> and in it adam sandler's character is very obsessed with shadow of the Colossus, and i was like you know i saw a good amount of that game in that movie so i decided to play it on ps now when ps now was very new and extremely unstable and horrible <laughs> and i did not get very far in that game and had a miserable time playing it so now i'm kind of like Ugh, but i just think it was more the 
connection issues, but I think yeah, it's, it's like it left a bad taste in my mouth. I guess I think it's one hundred percent worth playing, but I don't know if it's the right game for you. Just knowing you in particular, <laughs> knowing your yeah. aversion to Monster Hunter because you feel like you're being mean to animals. Yeah, like that's kind of oh, the, yeah. the one thing I had about Shadow of the Colossus is like. These guys didn't do anything wrong. You're running up on them and murdering them. But then, then of course, Cheska's teabagging them after they die. But like, that's a separate <laughs> thing. Like, you could go that route and just be like, ah, these are just <laughs> video game yeah, programming mean, things. But yeah, I mean, it's just you know, it's certain games, I guess, that hit me like that. Like, I don't know, Monster Hunter is one of those games that just made me feel emotional and weird. Like, I saw some footage of some. I don't know what the monsters' names are, but you know, the one of them got like had like a beak and it got stuck in something, and you're just like beating the shit yeah. out of it. That bothers me. I feel like if they could fight back a little bit more, maybe it doesn't bother me quite as much. Yeah, like but, the the yeah. game involves you like climbing up these monsters and like finding a weak spot and then just stabbing the shit out of it while they're like trying to get you off and like they're like shaking around, being like, "Stop." <laughs> So like yeah, I don't know, hacking like, out and then you come in and murder them. Yeah, like they're just okay, they're just doing their thing. So like yeah, just that, like knowing yeah. you, I don't think it would be perfect for you. Yeah. You are not you are not the good guy in Shadow of the Colossus. Mm -hmm. No, you were certainly. I mean, not. Well, although I do think that that's part of the point of Shadow of the Colossus yeah. more so yeah. than. Mm -hmm. Uh, like a, a lot of the criticism of Monster Hunter is that it's just kind of unintentionally doing that, yeah, yeah. whereas Shadow of the Colossus, it you're not doing great things, but the game isn't saying, "Oh, great job! You you sure yeah, slew that, that beast." That's like true. It's, you know, <laughs> so, especially especially with the ending. I, like I don't want to say what the ending is, but like you're right. Like the last cutscene and everything very much is directly in that vein. It's like you know what, you weren't that nice of a guy. So here's what happens. Turns out the hunters were the monsters all along. <gasps> what? <laughs> yeah. We're um, the real Walking Dead. I I, the I also say that, uh, that uh, the original game, as was mentioned earlier, the uh, frame rate wasn't always the best, and that plus PS early PS now. I imagine that would have been like a nightmare to play. Oh my god, it was horrible. <laughs> I don't I yeah. think like I mean I tried to play it for probably forty five minutes and then I was like, all right, fuck this. Like yeah. Yeah. she's not gonna happen. I, I, I don't blame you at all for that. So I, I, I think that's that's totally reasonable, but it sounds like the new version is doing a lot to improve upon that. So Yeah, frame rate was buttery smooth. Well. Um yeah. frame rate was buttery smooth on an original PS4. Like I don't have a pro, so yeah, maybe I should watch some gameplay footage and see if I get upset like I do yeah. Monster Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe watch like the first Colossus or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll stream it for you and we'll we'll have a good time. All right, it works for me. <laughs> um, so two of my having a good time. Bad segues into the news section. Uh, mm. So I've I've picked out a few news articles as per usual this week. As um, per usual. Oh, <laughs> please tell me you got to stop me if I haven't made try and make that sound again, guys. Uh, so um, I want to dive straight in with the games franchise that I know we all love, uh, big fans of, and talk about Call of Duty. Fuck yeah. Uh, so rumors and leaks this week uh, are that this year's Call of Duty is going to be Black Ops 4. Yep. And Fuck it's yeah, Black Ops. Switch, PC, PS4, and Xbox One. I really that wish Switch news is surprising. Too. I really wish Ooh. Treyarch would move away from Black Ops. I think it's the best of the Call of Duties, but I really wish they'd tried something else. It depends on what they do with it. I probably won't buy it either way. But like Black Ops One is the most fun I've ever had with a Call of Duty. Um, yeah, and I and so I hope that it is more like that than whatever. I don't know. They do weird stuff with the Black Ops games, and so I hope they keep doing weird stuff, but that it's better than the last one, I guess. I yeah, know. they do. I played probably mm, 70 to 80 hours of Black Ops 3 multiplayer uh, with Cheska, and it's actually really, 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 really good. It kind of It's kind of a halfway between Modern Warfare and like Titanfall 2 without the, the mechs in terms of you're just able to move around and stuff, and it's got some cool uh, abilities and like classes and stuff like that that you can kind of partake, with, partake in. So I think like the Black Ops series is really interesting. I think 
of the current developers of Call of Duty games, Treyarch is the standout. But like I said, I just kind of wish they would move away from Black Ops because Black Ops 4 is a big number. <laughs> I don't That's know. More, that is the most they have committed to a number since Call of Duty 4. Yeah, which was yeah. Modern Warfare, which was a, like its own subset eventually. So yeah. Black Hello. Ops 4 Modern Warfare. World at War was called Call of Duty 5 World at War in the UK. Was it? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> well, but um, yeah. Uh, I'm interested to play something Call of Duty this year. I think I'm kind of getting back into the mindset where I want to play a shooter. Probably not online. I just want to play the campaign. Um, and like I know I, I joked around earlier uh, when we were talking about a video series where I play the campaign for every Call of Duty game and I, I kind of feel like I'm itching closer to trying that because I really want to play the campaign from like the last two or three uh, that I've never gotten into. I feel like it'd be quite a funny excuse to do so. I, I will say the campaign for World War II is pretty mediocre. <laughs> mm, exciting. Yeah. Um... I don't know, but mediocre yeah, doesn't, like, inspire, like, ooh, yeah, I want to play this mediocre campaign. If it's, like, if it's bad, then, oh, ooh, yeah, I want that. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the problem, was it wasn't even bad enough to make fun of. <laughs> mm. Apparently, Infinite Warfare has a great campaign. Yeah. It's got Jon Snow in it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that also the one with Kevin Spacey? No, Kevin Spacey's um, Enhanced Warfare, in or whatever Infinite, it's Infinite, Infinite Warfare, Warfare yeah. Advanced warfare. Advanced warfare is Kevin Spacey. Infinite Warfare is Jon Snow. Oh, okay. Uh, moving quickly okay. on to another Activision franchise of like some repute, uh, Destiny 2's Taken King style big expansion at the end of the year has been confirmed in an Activision earnings call. Um, so they basically they haven't really said much. Uh, much, much that um, they've got an expansion coming in May and a major expansion coming at the end of the year. So, uh, um, yeah. I don't think I'm like I've played Destiny Two. I played The Taken King back when that came out. I don't think I'll get whatever this is, unless something drastically changes in my, like the game or my playing habits. I guess I don't know. But it just, I don't think Destiny is the game for me other than it plays well. Yeah, I don't know. I, I liked what I played of Destiny, but I pretty much played for a couple of weekends where I, I did clock quite a few hours those weekends because I, like, I happened to get it when I was injured. But uh, I don't know if I'll, it's, it's not necessarily a game I felt really the need to go back to. So I'm, I'm undecided. <laughs> I super want to finish that game. Like, I started it. I don't know. When did we start right. it, Sam? I started playing about with you a month ago. I think. Month, yeah. About a month ago, and now I can't play it because my thumb is the way that it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I was very excited about it. I had a lot of fun with it in the short I, amount of time I got to play it. I wonder mm. how the like hardcore fans will be feeling by that time. Like they'll probably mm. they'll, they'll come back in, but like with the way Bungie has been kind of it seems like things have been going from just looking from outside the community, it looks like people aren't super stoked on the way things are going. So I mm -hmm. wonder if just like, oh hey, more new content will actually pull those people in. It probably will, because I mean, let's be honest, uh boycott Call of Duty what World War War uh, Modern Warfare 2, Boycott Modern Warfare 2, yeah. and how that turned out. <laughs> That's exactly what's going to happen here, guaranteed. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. so... Uh, but yeah, for me, I, I'll probably end up buying it because I'm an idiot, but... <laughs> there's, I don't know. Did, did, you, ever, did you ever get your... Uh, Big surprise. Did you ever get your refund on Paragon? Oh, no, I should do that. There's still time. Thanks for uh, reminding me. So, a very real question, guys. If they're releasing a expensive expansion, does that mean that I can say Destiny 2 is my game of the year in 2018? No. no. <laughs> it's February. Stop talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, next up on the list, we've got uh, Nintendo games uh, on the Switch can now be bought, well, soon will be able to be bought with my Nintendo Gold Points. Yeah. Everyone excited about that? No. It's hard. <laughs> I like free money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so if it helps me save money on fucking crazy ass expensive Nintendo games, sure. If you here's the example that Polygon puts down. If you buy a game on the eShop, you get five percent back in gold points. Mm-hmm. So if you spend fifty bucks on an eShop game, you get two dollars fifty off your next eShop game. Okay, uh, that's not bad, honestly. As far as I could think, you know, Nintendo games very rarely go on sale, <laughs> so getting any money off of it is far and few between that's fair and but... here's where the, the kicker comes in physical games only get you one percent worth of the value of the game <laughs> in gold oh God. God. so you have Why? to buy it from the nintendo store to get enough yep. gold points i Such mean in my stuff. situation buying them um, digital is kind of the way to go but also with the storage on that thing asking mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. people to buy the oh my god nintendo yeah i need to figure out like upgrading the storage on my switch because i am definitely don't have much left. I think I've um, got a 64 gig stick in mine. Yep, I have me as well. Same size. Yeah, I have the this, this stick from my old Android tablet. <laughs> uh, you can get a 64 gig card, which is double the Switch memory. Uh, Allison from Amazon for like no money. Yeah, yeah, I know that you definitely can. I just need to make sure, like, I, I just don't know how to, um, just need to make sure that I can move it across and not delete anything. Uh, so. that, that is a uh, fair concern with that thing. I yep. don't. I, <laughs> I, d- I feel like you can, but I just I just know that sometimes switches like Nintendo moving things yeah, around yeah. is I, complicated. I don't think you can because I know the first thing I did when I installed my SD card was I was like, oh, I'm just going to move uh, uh, Xenoblade over to the the SD card because it takes up a lot of room. And mm-hmm. I looked through every single option. And there was no option to move it, so I just had to uh. uninstall it. And then, and then when I reinstalled it, automatically went to the SD card. So maybe they'll fix that by the time you do it. But I, it's, I thought they didn't. They recently fix that. I'm sure oh, there's an option with like, it's... or maybe that's the account, but it takes like the whole whole account. I can't just uh, it deletes the account, or maybe that's between switches. So never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. I think the way you do it is you manage the game in the game's own menu, not in the settings. So like you yeah, press I did plus. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I I didn't I don't think I moved. I only had like one digital game when I got my SD card in there. Yeah. There was some quote going around about how Miyamoto or like Nintendo would wanna like look to hire people who don't play games. And like I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That with every with the way every Nintendo console works <laughs> and looks and the controllers, that makes sense. They don't know how real yeah. people play games. <laughs> uh, speaking of real people playing games, Fortnite has beaten uh, the PUBG concurrent users. Oh, cool! Oh, uh, so on Super Bowl Sunday, before the entire server crashed because they had too many concurrent users, uh, they have three point like, four million. It's a free game. So yeah, that like, makes sense. The barrier to entry is literally literally zero, so that makes sense. Yeah, you just and, need a hard drive space. And and it's uh across it's on more platforms for free and exactly. it's also cross compatible. Yeah. So Yeah. That well that makes sense. Between PC, if you're uh Xbox and PC or PS4 and PC. Hmm. Yeah. How do they why what just Sony. Just do it. <laughs> do it. They don't need to though, you know? They're not yeah, they're not it. going to hey, they don't hey, have Erica, to. Erica. Just do it. <laughs> I mean, if it was up to me, I would, but, you know, I just don't think that they have to. They are winning. See this Nike logo? Just do it. (laughs) Let me get my Shia LaBeouf poster out. (laughs) But, yo, this is unrelated, but isn't Phil Spencer rad? Yeah. He's He's like, he's like, he's like the best thing to read three. He's like the best thing to happen to Microsoft in forever, especially after Matrix. Oh my god. 
he's the best thing of every three for me. Like their forty five minute interview or whatever, where he's like, Yeah, this is what we're doing, this is our philosophy, I love video games. Like that's he's his part of the giant bombing three coverage is my favorite yeah. by a country mile. Yeah, I agree. It's cool to see like someone who has such like a guiding hand and all that stuff like being out there open to doing those long form like discussion interviews instead of just like the canned like pr like uh Uh, media tours and stuff like that yeah i don't see andy house sitting down for more than three minutes with uh, yeah i don't see andy house sitting down anytime with anyone uh now since he is stepping down yeah yeah uh, or Sean Layden, like I don't see Sean Layden out there, like having like those open candid, you know, open candid as much as you know, someone in that position can. But like Sean Layden's not out there on a couch. Yeah, well, you had three written on a blackboard behind him. Yeah, you you had Adam <laughs> Boys, but then he went on to be a, a part but, of the Iron Galaxy Galaxy. Chuckleheads. So Adam Boys isn't even like even when he was there, he wasn't like that. No, he wasn't. In the he wasn't he top wasn't level the but... head of. Yeah, he was. You know, he was in third party relations, which is still. You know, that's cool and can get you some insight. But yeah, totally. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's cool that uh, what's his face is uh, Phil, Spencer. Phil Spencer is out there talking. But yeah. uh, there is some echo coming from someone. It might be from uh, your end, Alex. But I don't know. I just muted my mic. So okay. Um. Uh, my favorite thing in Slight Divergence also about Sean Layton is somebody pointed out to me that whenever he's on stage presenting, he does the finger tent. He... And now I can't unsee it. <laughs> he constantly finger tents. He it he really went to like public speaking school and learned <laughs> the the gestures. Like you can <laughs> You can, you can see, see it. it every time. Yeah, you can see it, every it doesn't seem natural. It doesn't he, exactly. It doesn't seem natural when he's up there talking. But uh, also, yeah. Metroid Prime Four is being developed by Bandai Namco in Singapore, apparently. Yeah, that's weird. According to a report from New Game. Yeah, that was odd. But apparently, it's the same team. Sorry, I. I don't know if I have the game right. They, it was also the same team that was working on Star Wars thirteen thirteen previously. There are some people from that team. Yeah. Okay. So like, apparently, yeah, it's got a lot of Ling- LucasArts Singapore stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I hope that game's good still. But... Yeah. Um, Bandai Namco previously worked for Nintendo on the Mario Kart arcade game, Smash Bros for three DS and Wii U, and Pokémon Tournament. Well, those are all pretty good games, so yeah, uh, I like a lot. Bandai Namco puts out or put out Dragon Ball Fighters. Seems like they make good games. I mean, Arc System made it, but Bandai Namco was like they got the license or whatever. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I'll wait till I see that game. Uh, I'm still not convinced that we'll see it. And, like in a meaningful capacity this year, but I don't yeah, know. I mean, Bandai Namco also put out Tekken, didn't they? Probably. So yeah, like, yeah, they put out Tekken. So th- those are all uh, all good games. So their track record is pretty solid for the moment. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we don't know about like the spe- I don't know what this specific team has put out, but yeah, that's... yeah, it's not the I'm worst not... news, I guess. It's probably people would probably be happier if it was Retro working on it. Yeah, but we already knew it wasn't them. So. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Whatever. The Surge 2 is coming out in 2019. Sorry, what, what no, 2? What? The Surge 2. Oh, oh yeah, The Surge. Yeah. Yeah, Sci-Fi I, Souls. I did not play The Surge 1. Uh, it looked kind of cool. They, but... they recently put out some DLC, didn't they? Like that, um, the amusement yeah, park, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yes. Maybe. <laughs> I think there's sure. a, I, I think there's a quick look on Dry and Bomb of it, and it looks real dumb, like yeah, in a good way. Yeah. I kind of thought other people might care about the surge, so I apologize for putting this new story in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I was definitely interested time. in playing it, but never got around to it. Uh, I'll maybe check out the surge too. I, if it's good enough to get a sequel, maybe it's worth actually checking out. I, don't know. I, I would bet money that the surge will be on PS Plus before December this year. Yeah, you know, I played good Lords though. of the Fallen, which that team made before yeah. the surge. Uh, because that was a PS Plus game, and mm-hmm. it didn't really grab me. 
So what? There is some sort of some sort of outside noise coming in. I don't know what that is. I think it, it was like Xavier being beautiful. Uh, oh, that might have been Xavier walking behind me. He's wearing slippers. He kind of drags his feet to keep him in there. <laughs> yeah, okay. yep, that makes sense. Okay. Sorry. Your, boyfriend's <laughs> work, or your husband has to work on his posture and his yeah, walking. Yeah, he does. But I needed water, so I made him get up and get it for me. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, I have two news articles left. If anyone, okay. if yes. anyone is ready. All right. Yes. All right. Let's do this. They're my both extremely important to the world of my body games. is Reggie. Um, oh no. Do you want the Nintendo news first or last? Last. What's the other news? Last or last? I think I think I've got two votes for last. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to send you guys a picture. Well, this plays Which great is... on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the news I'm going to talk about now. All right, let's see oh, this. that's right. Yeah. And oh, so... Christ, is that? <laughs> Game of the Year. What? Oh my god. What is this? This it's is Kingdom kind Hearts of grotesque. 3. That is the Monsters, Inc. world for Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh, I'd no. I'd like to draw your attention to the main character. As many oh. times as physically possible. What? Look at Goofy. Look at Goofy. Goofy. That's Goofy. Goofy's face is like. That's oh Goofy. My... <laughs> Look at the oh teeth. My God. In the full screenshot, I want you to know Donald Duck has one eye. Oh. I think, yeah, that's oh God. Great. That looks. You should have three. What? Mike Wazowski already has one. <laughs> that's. Uh... Maybe there's a third eye under the emo fringe. Maybe. That's worrisome. So I just wanted to draw your attention to how weird this picture is. <laughs> it's is very what weird. Really? So, so Kingdom Hearts 3 announced Toy Story. Like, a, No, Toy Story we already knew. They showed yeah. Toy Story and Kingdom Hearts, or Monsters, Inc. And I don't know, that seems cool. Uh, Monsters, Inc. is one of my favorite Disney movies. So mm -hmm. I'm excited. The only, the only thing I don't like about Monsters, Inc. is that Monsters University wasn't a hard R rating and like an Animal House style... <laughs> <laughs> uh, a film. I kind of like, love Monsters University. It's a good movie. Yeah, it's a really good movie. It's really well paced, also. Yeah, oh, hi, Kitty Cat. That's Banana. Mm. It's a great uh, takedown of capitalism, if you really think about it. And uh, but anyway, um, yeah, uh, I'm as I don't know if anyone else is interested in Kingdom Hearts, but uh, I look forward to playing Kingdom Hearts three. But I'm also hesitant and worried about Kingdom Hearts three. I don't know if that game's coming know. out. Uh, it, I mean, it's supposed to come out this year, and it, like, if they're actually showing stuff from it now, then I'm, I believe it. Do you reckon uh, we get a release date at E3 for this bad boy? Yeah, I bet it's holiday. Yeah. I, I realize Tetsuya Nomura is doing the Final Fantasy VII remake. That game is never coming out. <laughs> yeah, that's big for That's that doesn't uh, exist. Uh, but apparently they're changing the design of Cloud to mm. be, at least from those trailers, and so he's not going to be like his Advent Children kind of CG-looking self. He's going to be, like I guess, younger, more muscular or something. I don't know. Do they Are they going to keep the cross-dressing <laughs> in that game? I, I mean, it's, it's a Japanese developer, so I wouldn't be surprised. Because, they like, have... They're, they're, have they showed stuff from that? I don't think so. They haven't, but they made a statement saying that that scene is in. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. like, somebody asked them and they said it's in. There is, like, there's a, I think there's a comedian who kind of, that's the kind of their shtick. And, like, Japanese sense of humor is not what we would call PC, I guess. <laughs> uh, you know, for, like, a, a Western audiences, they're, like, someone showed up on a, New Year's special in blackface as like Jeez. Eddie Murphy from some movie, and that was all kind of a thing, but not yeah. really. Then they just showed it again and didn't do anything. So I, yeah, I'm not surprised that the cross dressing stuff is in there. Uh, you, they might change up like the tone of it, maybe, but maybe not. I don't know if that game ever okay. comes out because it won't. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the last piece of news. Oh god. <laughs> oh what is this? Oh no. I don't like this at all. 
<laughs> the last piece of news is uh, extremely important, I feel, to us as gamers and the gamer generation. Uh, generation Remix? Super Mar- the producer of Super Mario Odyssey, uh, Mr. Koizumi, did a dev talk on YouTube and uh, answered a specific, um, a specific question from a fan saying that Toad's head is not a hat, it is part of his anatomy. The, I'll, give you the, um, I'll give you the quote. So that, as it turns out, is actually Toad's head. I'm going to have to leave it to all of you to figure out exactly how that works out. Maybe there's something <laughs> inside. <laughs> oh my god. He's just a dummy. Oh he's got a, he's got a hollow color. head. I just love how Nintendo handles their continuity and their lore. It's just like, yeah, it's like this, whatever, figure it out. (laughs) Other questions that were asked. Why does Mario have nipples, but no belly button? (laughs) Because he... Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't really expect that to be a topic among fans. He was not born born of a human. (laughs) Once I heard people were talking so much about Mario's belly button, Maybe think start to think about whether we should revisit the topic on the design side. <laughs> no, here, here's the thing: Japanese people don't have belly buttons. Ah, I was. No, wait, wait, wait. Let me re- cut. Okay, Mulligan, cut that out. Mm-hmm. Alex, yep. Again, yep. Italian people don't have belly buttons. <laughs> uh, and then we also got he. He asked. He was asked if uh, so you could explain Mario's relationship with Peach and Pauline, and he said, "I would appreciate it if we could respect the privacy of those three at this time." <laughs> I kind of love that, actually. <laughs> Please don't politicize Mario, Peach, and Pauline. It's too soon. <sighs> I think we all know that it's Adam and Adam and Eve, not Mario and Steve and Pauline. And Pauline. And <laughs> And Mario and Evangelion <laughs> Genesis. <laughs> Mario, I don't even know. Neon Genesis Mushroom Kingdom. That'd be better. <laughs> Mar- I'd play that game. Mario shoved into a mech trying to to defend the Mushroom Kingdom from Bowser in an alien mech, turns or from out, the ra- from the Brutals in giant mechs. Yeah, turns out the mech is alive. It's actually just a toad. <laughs> it turns out the mech is Bowser. Oh, armor plate. Wait, what? Oh, Jesus! I, so it's a sequel to Bowser's Inside Story. I Mario, have... if you don't get in the, if you don't get in, we'll make Peach do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or else it gets the hose again. Um, I have one other piece of news that's actually serious. If you guys want a, a dumb, serious yes, one, yes, but... please, please. Okay. Sure. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you saw this. Uh, Activision Blizzard apparently they made over half of their revenue last year from microtransactions, not actually from game sales. Oh. What what games? Two billion or something, or four billion? Yeah, it was like four what? billion, yeah. four billion, and I think but... it's largely from overwatch yeah and yeah. like it's all from like blizzard stuff yeah destiny 2 uh call of duty world war 2 i think and okay. i don't know do you think that changes the way that they handle releasing games do they not sell games and they just go free to play and then sell stuff no, like no absolutely I mean, I think not that's, there's something to that i, I mean uh, i mean like there's been so much outrage about uh microtransactions and loot boxes and i and i think a lot of that's justifiable but at the same time if this is making them money i don't see them stopping anytime soon yeah i mean like but sorry go ahead was anyone complaining about the loot boxes in uh call of duty because wasn't it mostly oh, yeah. cosmetic stuff or okay was there Some like a people, big... did, yeah. people were complaining yeah for sure Okay, uh, because I, I didn't really see much of it because yeah, it seemed yeah, like yeah. the Battlefront stuff was a lot more egregious oh, in yeah, the way that, was, that it the, was implemented. Pe- yeah, people were definitely complaining about uh, World War II's loot boxes. Um, okay. Um, but but, no, but I, I just look sorry, I just look at games like Fortnite and Battle mm-hmm. Royale, which is completely free, and that's kind of changed the way Epic has handled everything. So Yeah, uh, yeah they, they're just like, oh, we're just going to cancel this game and give everyone a refund for this other game yeah. that we cancel. Like, that's crazy. So um, yeah. Even Disney wasn't like, oh, yeah, we're going to shut down this game. And like they got Disney money and they're not giving people refunds. 
Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like because people trust Blizzard for better or worse. Um, like I'm sure that I wonder if that includes stuff from uh, like World of Warcraft too, like gold and whatnot. Because gold is basically Bitcoin now, or there's like WoW coins mm-hmm. or whatever. You can buy like in-game currency with real money, and then you can use it to buy like subscription time or whatever. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how it works. Uh, but with the way. Like people are like, oh, Overwatch does loot box as well because it's all cosmetic. Like maybe that stuff's a little expensive, especially because yeah. of duplicates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I've spent like probably maybe a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars on like loot boxes in an Overwatch. Yeah, I think the I issue with uh, like thirty bucks. Yeah, I think the issue a lot with a lot of those, especially with people having issues, is when there are a lot of people where that might not necessarily be healthy spending for them even if it is just cosmetic oh yeah um, absolutely and then also uh, i think for a lot of overwatch too like i don't get mm. as into getting skins or i i mean i haven't even been that active of an overwatch player but sometimes some of the limited skins in particular people are frustrated that it can yeah. be really tough to get the skin they want even if you're playing all the time and yeah so you can't but really I'm... get it without paying money and then yeah. it's the I... all of the dime yeah, yeah. I, I would not sit here and say, oh, loot boxes are good for the industry overall. Like, you know, keeping a studio open and not having to lay off people is good. And yeah. if that's one way they can do it, if they can do it without being shitty about it and exploiting people who are prone to overspending and gambling and things, you know, to just addicted to getting money and everything they can have, then I think it's okay. And when it's loot boxes or when it's like cosmetics it's like you don't need the thing to get good at the game whereas in like battlefront getting those things actually improved like your character and like your abilities so if you didn't have stuff you were actually at a disadvantage if you didn't spend money basically yeah so yeah i uh i don't and like uh what is it uh hearthstone that's kind of built into the game model is Mm -hmm. the like buying card packs and stuff it's weird because they're digital, and so if they ever shut down Hearthstone, then there go all your cards. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and like they could leave it up and just like, hey, this is the game now. We're not gonna mess with it anymore. We might like patch it, but we're not gonna like put out more cards or update the game in any way. But I mean, good for Activision for making a lot of money despite putting out very few games. I um I have to say on like not to go too deep into the like loot boxes are or aren't gambling sort of stuff, but like uh I don't know there's there's a part of me that's no like, like I've always kind of had the opinion that you know people are responsible for moderating their own behaviour if that makes sense um and like addictive me- mechanisms in games are bad. But, like, you know, I, a friend of mine is an alcoholic and he doesn't go to the pub. Uh, and I know that it kind of sucks to be pushed out of one part of your hobby because you have that personality. But, I don't know, I think it's something that we have to consider as well, is that, like, there is personal responsibility involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, it's becoming more and more prevalent, like, even in, like, yeah. single-player games, so it's... Right. I, th- I think that's the biggest game. issue, too, is it's it'd be one thing if it was like, you you know, you might not want to play a, course, some games, whatever, but, but I feel like it's becoming really common. Yeah, I think it's a really fine line. It's it could go really way. predatory, but it could. But right now it's innocuous enough to not be like terrible. I don't know. Mm -hmm. depending depending on the developer and the specific game because yeah Yeah. like people do laud they they look at overwatch and they're like oh yeah that's the best way to handle it but then like i look at overwatch and i'm like there's some things i don't like about the way they've done loot boxes such as like you know they had the halloween ones that now you can never ever get one of those skins even if you really really want to and your computer was dead for those two weeks or whatever right Mm -hmm. yeah so Mm -hmm. like so they did yeah. well they brought back did they never bring back the halloween stuff i know they brought back like the summer olympics 
Like, I'm not brought, too sure. Like, the summer games one. So. I didn't follow that as closely as I should have, but like I remember for a yeah. long time it was that way. So yeah, if yeah, it has yeah. changed, well, I'm not sure. Right. So Overwatch oh. came out in 2015, right? Yeah, 2015. Yeah. Yes. yes. And so like, cause so that summer, what? No, wait, is it the next summer? No, they did like the Summer Olympics, right? Maybe? Rio was 2016. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Cause well they did the they did the winter the summer Olympic or that was winter what I've got no okay <laughs> soccer World Cup what was no because okay yeah because there's the tracer like runner like Olympic thing and like the Zarya weightlifting ones okay yeah those Just came sports. yes those came <laughs> back out at some point like the next summer yeah they did a re-release of those last summer so okay the Olympics in 2016 they put out the summer games skins. 2017 they put them back out so you could get yeah. them again i believe so did they not do a second set of halloween skins i, I don't think i ever got any of the halloween skins because i was busy with like school and stuff at the time so i didn't play but yeah and like i mean i yeah. we're talking about like how you know maybe it's kind of bad but those uh lunar new year skins look pretty sick but also like mercy is yeah. like dressed in like Mercy was like a Swedish lady is dressed in like a traditional Chinese dress and stuff like that. So that's, mm. you get a lot of cr criticism on like the blizzard has not been free of criticism on the way they costume their characters. And then they still go and do stuff like that. <laughs> but like, you've got, um, yeah, you've got a Chinese character in your game. <laughs> I, I really like the way that um, Overwatch does it. And like, I think the reason for me that, uh, I like it is because they give you so much for free. Like every character is free, every mode is free. Yeah. Like, and I mean, this is after getting... you bought the game, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. But like, that's not the case with basically any other game that I could point to. Dota two, like, yeah. Well, Dota two is <laughs> that's a free game. Yeah. It's also horrible. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. <laughs> I've never, I have not liked playing Dota 2 at any point. I'm a League of Legends boy. I have 5,000 hours in that game. <laughs> but, like, if we're talking about other shooters, like, let's go back to sure. the one that I can remember most recently, like, Evolve. Like, oh, sure. Evolve charged you for every character, for every monster, for every map. Yeah. No, the map, sorry, the maps were free, but everything else cost money. And, like, yeah. um,. You can even point to like Mario Kart, like the new carts and the new tracks cost money. Or and like fighting games. What was that one yeah, fighting game games. where every character cost money? Uh, what, there Street was Fire. Killer Instinct. Mm -hmm. the Street Fighter. Killer, Killer Instinct when it came out, it was, there, there was, was the that. free version that had like a rotating <sighs> character, kind of all the League of League of Legends, and you could buy them individually. Yeah. Which or you could buy the hmm. full game and get all of them unlocked. Which fight was it? Tekken Cross Street Fighter that had the gem system that everybody was really pissed about too. Yes, yes, it did. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't it Street Fighter Cross Tekken? Yes, yeah, sorry. Or, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Tekken Cross Street Fighter never came out. Yeah, but now people want it because Akuma was cool in Tekken. Yeah. I guess. So yeah, there's it was very cool in Tekken. But yeah, so there's definitely examples of it being handled poorly. Yeah. Yeah. And like I don't know. I mean, like I feel like there's so much free content in Overwatch that like if they need to sell skins to the people who want to buy skins to fund that and like especially as well like i personally i'm i don't care as much about what my character looks like in that game i guess as you might do i, I might be in on the outside opinion there but uh I think it's also that they're not just selling skins, but they're selling loot boxes. I feel like people would be a That's, lot yeah. have a lot different of an opinion if you could just see a skin that you wanted yeah. and it's two dollars and you bought it outright versus yeah. how to play the loot box lottery until I get it. I don't need six May skins. Or I, you I don't, don't need a, a a thousand sprays and no skins. I, yeah, I, I you know, there are characters where I'm like I've got like I've got like all of the like high like the upper tier skins for them. I'm like, what do I, what do I even do with these? I can't use them. I can't like switch mid match. I can't, you know, and, but, ah, and some I always remember unlocking hundreds of Hanzo skins 
and yeah. just like I don't like Hanzo and I don't play as Hanzo. So unlocking all these skins for a character I never used. Yeah. And I have no Zenyatta skins and I played him every match. I've got so many Zenyatta skins that I never play him. What a shame. But yeah, it's and then there's yeah. Uh but at least the stuff isn't necessary to play the game. Yeah. And that's kind of where I fall on that. But I've I have definitely spent like lots of money on skins and like League of Legends and stuff. Uh so I don't know. I kind of get suckered in. I'm like, oh, I want my character to look cool like that. But I unlock. I bought the when I got spent thirty pounds on uh, loot boxes in Overwatch. I got enough dust over accumulated from doubles to get the um, Hornet color Diva skin, and that was basically the only one I wanted. So I <laughs> never bought a loot box after that. I think. That's smart. I think I did the same thing with like the firefighter May. <laughs> yeah that's a very good skin yeah um yeah i keep meaning to rebuy overwatch actually i took i traded it in when i felt like i was done with it but i feel like i shouldn't be done with it i, I haven't think played, switch, though. i haven't played since before doomfist came out i should check that game same. out again but i'm not same. i don't have like a great setup for playing computer first person shooters in this apartment but yeah well, i was playing on ps4 anyway Anyway, I guess uh, on that lovely note of talking about loot boxes and gambling, maybe we should uh, shut this bad boy down. Hold on, because... I got one more quick thing to say. Oh, okay, wait, wait, okay. is, it about, is it about Terry Crews and his, <laughs> his cooking channel? No, it's about Yakuza. <laughs> oh, sick. You can um, buy the end of this podcast for two ninety nine. PayPal it to... <laughs> Stamp you stock. like Yakuza. <laughs> um, yeah, Yakuza 4 and 5 popped up on PlayStation Now randomly. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's cool, as hell. Um, cool. Yeah, so that might make me want to try PlayStation Now again. And now that I have stronger internet, except now that today it really hates me because I keep popping in and out of this. But, the only uh, I really want to play Yakuza Dead Souls, which is the like zombie one, and like you fight I a tiger. Play the uh, Bushido era one, the like super old version of Yakuza. I don't know who's on PlayStation now. Yeah. But that's pretty rad. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Let's see. Is that going to be coming to a stream near us soon? So wait, what is Uh, it? Yeah, that's... Not yet, because we're still doing Yakuza 0. uh... Where are you in Yakuza 0? Um, We are at chapter... 11? Sounds right to me. 10 or 11. What's what's happening in the story? Um, I don't, I don't want to spoil it completely, but uh, for uh, like, yeah, like the brief synopsis for people who may have not watched your stream. I yeah, know, we I, I don't are the chapter numbers. Approximately like we're running around with Makoto a little bit. Um, As Majima. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. and yeah, and somebody else. Who was with her before has died recently. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. I know where you are. And we're pretty much just grinding side quests, doing lots of pocket racing and uh, the important know, things. Whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> Buying it. mushrooms from a guy. That, that, <laughs> that pocket racing side story actually gets pretty sad. Oh, no. <laughs> How many hours do you fun... guys on? Oh, geez. Hold on. Let me ask Xavier if he knows. Babe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Xavier, what? do you know how many hours we're in on Yakuza? Uh, let's say 50 plus. 50 plus, he said. No, that sounds right to me. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so... I'm never finishing that game, am I? <laughs> <laughs> it's long. I mean, you know, if you mainlined it, honestly, it would... Yeah, we would have been done already, probably, but... Treat yeah. Mr. Shakedown like a giant and an ass. <laughs> or like, or like, or like, oh, go on. We've gotten Mr. Shakedown a couple of times now. What what I hate about Mr. Shakedown though is when he's down and like asleep, like and, and you find him in the world, you just like you like pull like, you you can rob him, but you like rob him like a hundred yen at a time, and it's so frustrating. <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> yeah. Just like slip one like bill out of his pocket <laughs> whenever he's down. Well, the thing is, a hundred yen is only like. 
is like the size of a quarter. Yeah. <laughs> so you're pulling coins out of his like clothes, yeah. just like the folds <laughs> in his jacket. But you know, that game is still super good. And if you'd like to watch me play it, you can do that. <laughs> you can hey. watch Xavier play it on twitch.tv slash Zupa Dupa. Um, and we will be doing that probably like an hour, an hour and a half. Exciting. Yeah. I'm probably going to go to bed now because it's pretty late. But where can people find you? You can find me in a bed. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can find me uh, under at SGCH on Twitter and Instagram. And also you can follow my cats if you like. They're Barry underscore and underscore. Do they pay for sponsorship. Yeah. <laughs> underscore. <laughs> uh, underscore brothers. And uh, they have officially sponsored this episode. Where's my cut? Uh, I, I deal with the finances. Uh, you're just talent. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Going back to show. Your cat turds are in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I bought that, the bullshit from Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping it was an actual bullshit, but... <laughs> Speaking of bullshit, where can we find you on the internet, Andre? Uh, oh. Ouch. Uh, you can find me at real sangirl42069 <laughs> uh, on my free cams mm. uh, <laughs> uh at cool saw c o o l s l 4 w on twitter and cray underscore dre d r e on uh the buds the instagram the buds what the what? buds who <laughs> <laughs> is that someone talking buds what <laughs> alex why can we google you Google. You can go to Google and you can find me there oh. probably. And apparently or hopefully soon you will be able to find this podcast on iTunes and or Google Play because that is in submission. Can I use Ask Jeeves? Can I, you can try. Yeah, can, I ding you? <laughs> can I ding you? Uh, this week if you want to find me in real life, I'll be in the mountains. So. Oh. Yeah. Going full Justin Timberlake. What? His like new album sounds like that's a, a Bonnie Bear album. That album not very good. It's pretty underwhelming. Yeah. Well, I thought it was quite bad. Uh, yeah, there are some things on it that I like enough, but overall, yeah, I was disappointed. Also, that Super Bowl performance pretty disappointing. I had people tell me like, "Oh, it's good. I know you like Justin yeah. Timberlake, so you should watch it." And I watched it. I'm like, "This is real bad uh, mm -hmm. for him. This is real subpar." Did you no. guys see Austin's tweet about him being dressed as a Far Cry 5 NPC? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny. It's extremely good. But yeah. And um, accurate. It's, it's not wrong. But yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing this podcast finally on the iTunes and finally on the Google Play because it has Allison on it. And where do you find Allison? Oh. Hey, yeah. uh, you can find me on Twitter at W-R-I-T-E-R-S-E-R-E-N-Y-T-Y. And I promise I'm looking for a more user-friendly <laughs> username. <laughs> <laughs> is your name taken <laughs> yes but i don't want it to be my name so uh, speaking of uh finding people on the internet <laughs> erica where can we find you oh uh the twitch stream i just said a little bit ago um you could also listen to my other podcast which is uh called tempered expectations and it's my husband and I talking mostly about video games and wrestling. So mostly New Japan, but also NXT and occasionally WWE pay-per-views. <laughs> we should uh, pop one of your episodes in our feed and vice versa. Uh, yeah, we have it now. To listen. I try to uh, I try to plug this one every one of my other podcasts that we do. <laughs> yeah, cross pollinate. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, well, iTunes and SoundCloud, I think, are the two places that you can find. No that GMO one. podcasts. <laughs> if um, if anyone is interested, also, I will be tweeting a lot, probably about Black Panther this week, as I'm seeing on Tuesday. Ooh. Keep that out of my wow. feed. 
you get it's not out here till the end of the month. Wow, you get to watch a good movie in theaters? I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we usually get Marvel movies like three, four weeks early, but we're getting it like four days early. It's very upsetting for me. You're getting it all like three weeks before me. I don't get it till March 1st. Oh, Which is weird because well, four came out at the same time here, so I don't know. You got uh you guys gonna gotta wait for when I start talking about Infinity War, which every Avengers movie has come out almost a month early in the UK. <laughs> wait, IMDB the Black Panther is a six point eight. Ooh. It was ninety nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes last time I looked. Ninety eight right now, eighty six on Metacritic. This is, sums up on IMDB. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wow! There was a whole campaign to review bomb it. Yeah, yeah. Fifty Shades yeah, Freed is eleven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow, well, that's generous. Are you not surprised though? <laughs> no, yep. is that movie should be a sixty-nine percent? Yeah, you're right. No. Nice. <laughs> and on that fantastic note, let's end this podcast before we all burn down in flames. <laughs> Is that because your girl, your wife, is threatening to like light you on fire for being up so late, keeping her out? No, she's actually not threatening me at all this week. I'm not got, I'm not got any text messages or anything. <laughs> got a notification from Crunchyroll. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to send Alex some McElroy Brothers related links. Thank you. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Great times.